The story begins by introducing a young man named Benjamin Engel. He's a college student who sees himself as pretty ordinary, even though others might call him strange because he doesn't have any friends. Benjamin's childhood wasn't easy, as his dad left when he was eight, and he watched his mom struggle with schizophrenia until he was cared for by his grandma, who later battled Alzheimer's and had to be hospitalized. Because of all this, Benjamin always feels like he's not good enough and like no one sees him. Until one day, he discovers the internet and realizes he can be anyone he wants there, even a superhero. So, Benjamin starts spending lots of time online, learning about programming and getting really good at hacking into websites, going by the name Who Am I? He also takes on different jobs, like delivering pizzas to make ends meet. From that moment on, Benjamin spends a lot of time surfing the internet and becomes interested in programming, becoming skilled at hacking into many websites and adopting the alias Who Am I? Additionally, to support himself, Benjamin takes on various jobs, including working as a pizza delivery guy. That evening, Benjamin is out delivering pizzas to his college pals. While there, he meets Marie, his first crush. But because Benjamin's too shy to talk to her, Marie's friends tease him, and he can't stand up for himself. However, Marie asks Benjamin for help with an exam and wants him to hack into the campus server to get the questions. Back home, Benjamin sees this as a chance to win Marie's affection. So, without hesitation, he agrees to help her that very night. Sneaking into the campus server, Benjamin plans to get the exam questions for Marie. Unfortunately, he gets caught and ends up sentenced to 50 hours of community service for his actions. The next day, Benjamin starts his community service with other people who got sentenced. There, he meets Max, a friendly guy who strikes up a conversation with him. Benjamin shares his computer problems and how they got him into trouble. Max realizes they both have an interest in hacking and becomes friends with Benjamin the next day. He throws a party and invites Marie and her friends, but Benjamin, as usual, can only admire Marie from afar because he lacks confidence. Max notices Benjamin's downcast mood and takes him to the second floor to meet his friends, Stephen and Paul. Unbeknownst to Benjamin, Max secretly wants to test his hacking skills. When Benjamin agrees, he decides to hack the area's electrical system on the spot. Benjamin successfully shuts off all the lights, ending the party abruptly and attracting the police. Despite the chaos, Max is impressed by Benjamin's skills and decides he's the right person for his team. But before explaining everything, Max and his friends flee from the house to avoid the police. Meanwhile, for Benjamin, the most important thing happened that night is that Marie finally remembers him after so long, which makes him happy enough. The following day, Max meets Benjamin again and tries to boost his confidence with small acts. He shows Benjamin how confidence can help in tricky situations, like getting a free donut by complaining with assurance. And apparently, this example marks the beginning of their first mission. Max asks Benjamin to hack into a seminar organized by a pro-Nazi party. But to do it, Benjamin must enter the building and take control of its computers simultaneously with Stephen. Benjamin feels nervous at first, as he's never done anything like this before. Meanwhile, Stephen has another task, so Benjamin has to move without anyone's assistance. But after convincing himself he's invisible, Benjamin goes ahead with his mission. Later, they regroup in the car and see the results of their work in making a mockery of the party. Their first mission accomplished. Now they need a headquarters for their future actions, so they choose Benjamin's grandmother's empty house. There, they decide to name their group Clay. According to Max, this name will later become their brand for all their hacking actions. The following days after joking around all day, the Clay team starts launching more serious attacks to catch the attention of a top hacker named Mr. X. That day, they planned to hack the stock exchange during a live TV broadcast, and they targeted a big pharmaceutical company. Their actions become a hot topic in Germany, with people debating whether Clay is just a group of mischievous teens or a dangerous criminal gang. But despite their efforts, they still haven't caught Mr. X's attention, which frustrates Max. Unbeknownst to them, a senior Europol investigator named Han begins to investigate the hacker's actions closely. She's been trying to track down a hacker group called Friends for years, who've been selling data from international institutions on the darknet. 
Han's position as an investigator is at risk if she can't crack the case. Meanwhile, Clay continues having fun with their hacking skills. That night, Max successfully manipulates a radio channel and wins a red Porsche, which they enjoy with their friends. On the other hand, Benjamin, who isn't fond of crowds, sneaks away from the party to meet Marie. He hopes to impress her with the red Porsche. However, Marie becomes suspicious of where Benjamin got the car. He then lies, saying it's a gift from his office for exceeding targets. But despite his efforts, Marie doesn't reciprocate his feelings, leaving Benjamin disappointed. The next day, the Clay headquarters received a surprising message from Mr. X Max had thought they had caught the attention of the famous hacker, but it turned out Mr. X sent a file to Han that confirmed Clay wasn't a feared hacking group. Realizing they were underestimated by Mr. X, Max got furious. He decided to target big corporations to prove Mr. X wrong. With their next target was the German Secret Service office. To get in, Clay members had to find employees' emails, then trick them to access the central server. They succeeded in just two days, and that night, they visited the building, wearing masks to avoid CCTV cameras. Once inside, they got to work with Max hacked the security door password, Stefan hacked the surveillance cameras, and Benjamin went to the main server room to hack into all the computers. Their goal was to prove that Clay was a successful hacking group. But unexpectedly, Benjamin found something that would change his life. Later on, Clay decided to leave a trace behind at the office by continuously printing Clay logos through the printer. That night, they felt confident that Mr. X would soon recognize their skills. So, they celebrated their success by partying with other young people. Marie was there again, and Benjamin planned to approach her, especially since he was with his friends now. To boost his courage, Benjamin took a magic pill. But just as he was about to talk to Marie, Max approached her first, making Benjamin angry. The next morning, Benjamin drove away his friends who tried to apologize. Still angry, Max became upset and blamed Benjamin for his current state, saying he wouldn't be like this if they hadn't met. This hurt Benjamin, who then remembered the data he obtained from the Secret Service office. Without hesitation, he sold the data to Mr. X on the darknet. Meanwhile, Han follows the trail left by Clay at the Secret Service office, finding many Clay logos. She then receives a report that a member of Friends has been caught, but was found dead. The next day, Benjamin is finally found by his friends, but he's still angry and pushes them away. Suddenly, they hear news about another Friends member named Krypton who died, linked to Clay's attack. And this news shocks all Clay members. Max can't believe their attack resulted in data theft, as they didn't plan for it. Benjamin regrets his actions the most, as he only wanted to get Mr. X's attention. This angers the other Clay members, but Stefan suggests they leave before the police find them. Max then realizes the police are after friends, not them, so they decide to inform the police about Mr. X's identity. That night, they go to the public library to communicate with Mr. X. Representing Clay, Benjamin pretended to want to join friends, replacing Krypton. In the virtual world, Mr. X finally appreciated Benjamin's performance, but gave him a task targeting Europol. Meanwhile, Han's team found Mr. X's communication network with Benjamin, but took time to locate him. Eventually, they traced him to the public library. Clay, realizing they were targeted by the police, fled after receiving a task from Mr. X at the same time. Han almost caught Benjamin, but he managed to escape, leading to her removal from her position. Despite this, Han concluded that Mr. X was part of Friends and needed to be apprehended. Meanwhile, Clay is strategizing to face the challenge posed by Mr. X, as penetrating Europol's high security system is difficult. The Clay members rest at a hotel as their temporary headquarters. Benjamin, feeling responsible for leading his friends into this situation, couldn't sleep. That night, he returns to Europol and applies what he learned from Max. Benjamin pretends to be a student visiting for learning purposes and claims to have left his wallet in the cafeteria. After convincing the officer with a fabricated story about abuse from his father, Benjamin is allowed to enter. Given two minutes to find his wallet, Benjamin uses the opportunity to install equipment, granting him access to Europol's systems. After successfully installing the equipment, Benjamin waits for an opportunity to access Europol's server. 
Once he does, he plans to transfer the information to Mr. X through the darknet. However, Benjamin also installs a double virus to deceive Mr. X and reveal his identity. Unfortunately, Mr. X outsmarts him, using the opportunity to uncover Benjamin's secrets, leading to him being chased by the police. With his mission failed, Benjamin returns to the hotel to find that his friends have been eliminated by unknown individuals. Benjamin finally gathered the courage to report to Han. He recounted all the events, including his intention to expose Mr. X's identity as a member of Friends to seek revenge for his friend's death. Benjamin promised to cooperate with the police if given witness protection rights. Initially, Han didn't believe him until Benjamin confessed to hacking her identity, knowing her personal secrets. This convinced Han that Benjamin wasn't just any hacker, so she gave him a chance to help capture Mr. X. Benjamin then adopted a new strategy in the hacker world, pretending to be Mr. X to gain the trust of other hackers. The real Mr. X panicked, unknowingly revealing his secrets. Eventually, Benjamin fulfilled his promise to help the police catch Mr. X. Now, it was Han's turn to fulfill her promise to protect Benjamin as a witness. However, she needed to ensure Benjamin and his friends' criminal traces as clay. Upon investigation, Han found that all the locations were clean, contradicting Benjamin's claims. So, Han met Marie and asked about Benjamin. Marie admitted she didn't know him well, contradicting Benjamin's claim of dating her. Suspicious, Han met with Benjamin's family psychiatrist and learned his mother had dissociative identity disorder, which could be inherited. This led Han to believe Benjamin also had a mental disorder, canceling his witness protection and leading to his arrest. Meanwhile, Han received an award for capturing the most wanted hacker. While Benjamin apologized for hacking her identity, which softened Han's heart, she freed Benjamin and told him to change his identity. Unbeknownst to Han, this was part of Benjamin's plan with his friends. They deliberately intertwined real events with lies to deceive everyone, and now they were free to be anything and anyone. Moral lesson from the story, if you want to impress someone, don't go hacking into servers or pretending to win fancy cars. Just be yourself, even if it means admitting you don't have a clue about hacking or where that Porsche came from.